The white-tailed deer is one of Wisconsin's most iconic wild animals. Found in every part of the state, this resilient animal has had a large role in Wisconsin's strong outdoor heritage. Over the course of four years, the Department of Natural Resources conducted one of the largest wildlife studies in Wisconsin history. This study was designed to better understand the lives and deaths of the white-tailed deer. The most basic question was, what percent of deer survive from year to year? This is important to know because, along with reproduction, survival rates determine how much a population goes up or down. From 2011 to 2014, the DNR worked closely with UW-Madison, nonprofit organizations, hunters, and landowners to collar more than 1,000 deer. The gold standard for studying wildlife is by placing radio collars on individual animals. This allows us to track animal movements and to determine when and where they die. Now, collaring a large number of animals is a monumental task. We were successful because of the um, large number of dedicated volunteers. And really, this was the only way we were able to be successful, by having all these volunteers in the field helping us do our work. Research crews use a variety of safe capture methods to restrain deer in order to collar them. From traps to nets to tranquilizer darts, the deer are captured, collared, and then released. The study was split into two different locations, a northern forest area and an eastern study area were selected due to key differences in deer populations, habitat, predators, and weather conditions. The northern study area has more predators and harsh winters compared to the eastern study, which has more agriculture and more hunters. After conducting the study, researchers narrowed in on survival rates and the major causes of deer mortality. Age was a big factor in both regions of the study. Let's start with fawns. The causes of fawn deaths differ greatly between the two areas. In the northern study area, fawn survival varied widely from year to year, from as high as 55% to as low as 25%. Bears were the number one cause of death, followed by bobcats, coyotes, and starvation. For the eastern study area, 65% of fawns survived. Starvation was the number one cause of mortality, followed distantly by predation and roadkill. Going into their first winter, the young deer of both study areas did well during mild winters. However, survival rates dropped significantly in severe winters. This was especially true in the northern study area. The adult deer, on the other hand, fared much better in both the northern and eastern study areas. In both areas, survival was around 90% every year. Even during the harshest winters, adult deer proved to be hardy survivors. To sum it up, research shows that in the northern study area, predation and starvation are the most common causes of death for deer younger than two years old. While in the eastern study area, the leading causes of death were vehicle collisions and starvation. Starvation was surprising in the farmland because during the growing season, food is just so abundant. The problem is that during winter, many of the woodlots didn't have adequate food to sustain deer. The last major cause, and easily the largest factor in deer mortality, was hunting. In the eastern study area, about one half of the yearling bucks died each hunting season, and about two-thirds of adult bucks died during this time. Interestingly, in the northern study area, the harvest rates of yearling and adult bucks did not differ. About one half of these bucks were killed by hunters each season. In both areas, hunting was the number one cause of mortality in deer. Okay, now we've seen the results of our study. How will this information be used to guide deer management in Wisconsin? Here's Dan Storm to tie everything together. The first thing is to share the findings of this study as widely as possible so that all of us can gain a better understanding of Wisconsin's deer herd. Including in that is how our study confirmed the critical role of deer habitat. Improving winter habitat through timber harvest or reducing overbrowsing can improve deer survival rates and deer health. And finally, the data from this study will be used to strengthen population estimates for the annual quota. Through the helpful partnerships and volunteers, the Wisconsin DNR is able to continuously study and manage the deer population across the state, ensuring that our most iconic wild animal will thrive in Wisconsin for both hunters and wildlife enthusiasts for decades to come. For more information and to see the full report, visit dnr.wy.gov and search keyword deer research.